Hi, this is Stacey Harris, and I want to wish everybody a Happy New Year. This is our first show of the year with Making Connections, and um, hope everybody had a great holiday season. I know I am looking forward to a fantastic 2018, and I hope that all of you are as well. I always like to start out the show uh, explaining just a little bit about what this is about and why I named it Making Connections. Throughout my life, I have found that the most impact that uh, I have experienced in life and business has been through the people that I met and the experiences that I had with the people that I came across. And there were just so many individuals in my life as I look back over it. I sound like I'm 100, don't I? But I'm not. And um, But as I look back over my life, how many people there were that influenced me and um, they said just a word or two or gave me an encouragement or recommended a book or a website that I check out um, or sat me down and had a heart-to-heart -heart talk of, hey, I think you're going in the wrong direction. And, um, and that helped me so much to make better decisions, to um, really evaluate what I was doing in my business and my personal life even. And um, so I just feel like there are these angels, I always say, that God puts in our paths that we cross from time to time that really impact us. And really that is what networking is about. So um, I do have a, a networking group franchise in the Woodlands area called Network in Action, and um, that alone has completely changed my life. The individuals that have become a part of that group, we've become a family, a community, and, um, you know, I, I actually have a member who recently lost her job, and the first thing she did was she reached out to everybody in Network in Action, you know, and that's, that's why we network, and that was the conversation that she and I had, so... I really do want to encourage my, my networking tip for the month. I always like to share a little something at the very beginning is this. If you are not networking, you need to be networking. Uh, whether you want to do it or not, whether you think that you can do it. Um, if you think you can, you can. And if you think you can't, you can't. You know, it's, all, it's a mental thing. It's a decision that you make. But whether you're a business owner or you're in a corporate job or you're a stay-at-home mom or a stay-at-home dad, you still need to have a network. You need to have a community of people that have things in common with you, um, who can support you, who have, it, it's not about just that person that you're connecting with at the time, but it's about the people that they know. And so, um, you know, this member I was talking about that recently lost her job, the first thing she did, like I said, is she, she reached out to her networking community, and now she has about 40 or 50 people who are helping her find a job. It's not just her anymore. So networking, it's not about yourself. It's not about so much how you feel when you're networking. It's about the results that you get, the relationships that you make. Think about it as just going out and making a bunch of friends. If you can kind of have that attitude about it, um, that makes everything a whole, whole lot better. So I hope that that will give you something to think about this month and that you'll consider doing it. We'd love for you to come and visit a Network in Action meeting. If you want to get your feet wet networking with us in the Woodlands, that would be awesome. Uh, I want to introduce my guest that I have today. It is John Bishop and Bogdan Mihai. They are, did I say that right, Bogdan? He's very Yes, right. he's nodding yes. Um, Bogdan is from Romania, and um, they have together a business called Bubariza Productions. They do video production, photography, and I cannot say enough good things about them. So I can't wait to introduce them to all of you. And... Um, hear their stories about uh, their business and how they've come to this point in their life. So please stay tuned. We will be back in just a few minutes, and you're listening to Making Connections with Stacey Harris. Remember to download the Lone Star Community Radio app from your Google Play Apple Store. Bring Montgomery County's Community Radio with you anywhere with your smartphone or tablet. If you are in the Conroe area, tune in on FM 104.5, 106.1. If you are on your computer, bookmark IRLoneStar.com as your internet radio station. Lone Star Community Radio broadcasting 24-7 from the heart of downtown Conroe, Texas. For those of you who like your partners, your gumbo, and your music salty, well, we're here to help with the music. Julian Shea here, host of Lone Star Country Nights Thursday, your weekly dose of roots and Americana and all the music that makes this part of the country special. We stir in western swing, honky-tonk, Zydeco, Texas blues, outlaw country, and put a pinch of red dirt, and then we smoke it over a slow fire. Then listen to the results Thursday nights on Conroe's 104.5 and 106.1 and worldwide at IRLoneStar.com. Making Connections with Stacey Harris, and I have 
have with me today two of my favorite people in the whole wide world. It was a happy day when our paths crossed, and of course we met networking. Mm -hmm. um, we were actually at a um, at a networking event up here in Conroe, and um, these two guys just really stuck out to me. They were so passionate about what they about what they do, and I'm um, really wanting to help people with. Their talent that they have is just incredible. And so we have John Bishop and Bogdan Mihai. Good they are good morning. And they are together, Boobaruza Productions. And Boobaruza, spell that for us, John. B U B U R U Z A. And Bogdan, this is Romanian mm -hmm. from your country, and it means, it means the ladybug. Um, the more I think about it, maybe we should have uh, called it Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> Would have been so much easier. Well, than the logo Bubaruza? would look different. Than yes. <laughs> so, what made you change? What's the significance of Ladybug? You know, uh, at some point, John uh, was uh, writing uh, children's books, uh -huh. and, and still am, uh, mm -hmm. and still is. is He's and, a man uh, of many talents. At that point, we thought of something fun, something appealing for kids, mm -hmm. and then everything, you know, expanded. And I said. There's no point of changing it. You know, yeah. Just stick with it. Mm -hmm. And funny. I figure people can remember Schlumberjay. They can right. remember Boobarusa. <laughs> we say that here all the time, Absolutely. don't we, in Houston? It's yeah. just a great word, <laughs> Boobarusa. Say it every day. Uh, and it really doesn't matter at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. It's what we're doing and who we That's are. That's right. That's right. Well, and let's let's talk about that a little bit. Um, well, John, you want to go first? Yeah, I'd sure. love for you I'm just older. to share. <laughs> No, that is not the reason. Oh. Um, we do not talk about age. Um, I really just share a little bit about personally mm -hmm. how you got to where you are now and um, how you ended up, you know, in this business and, and the two of y'all working together. So tell well, us a little bit about you. I like to say Bogdan is from the exotic uh, border between uh, of, of Transylvania, uh -huh. and I'm from the exotic border with Pasadena, Texas. Yeah. <laughs> how is that called? Not even. Uh, no, there was a book. Uh, oh, Mulvania. Mulvania. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. The uh, so no, I grew up in Southeast Houston mm -hmm. uh, and um, spent some time abroad uh, as an exchange student uh -huh. in Mexico and in Spain, and um, went off to college. Uh, started teaching, and I was in libraries for about thirty years. Um, so I was doing school libraries and public libraries. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was a great experience. Lots of public service, lots of, uh, of customer service mm -hmm. in uh, in libraries. But I always had the the bug to travel. Uh, came upon an, an opportunity when I was in living in San Diego to uh, to work abroad in one mm -hmm. of the international schools, mm -hmm. and uh, said sure. So I, I applied to ten different places: London, Paris, you know, all, and then I. I, I wanted to do ten, uh -huh. and uh, so I had nine, and I didn't know where where else to look. The tenth one would be Romania because it had a really pretty building. Yeah, <laughs> and I said, well, I could work there. The architecture there is beautiful. I it think is Romania. Yeah. So the next thing I knew, uh, I got a, a call, and they said, "How fast can you get here?" Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, "I don't know." Uh, <laughs> this was in October, and a woman knocked on my door about 10 minutes after I hung up the phone. And she's a real estate agent uh -huh. handing out calendars for the next year. And I said, can you sell my house? <laughs> <laughs> so I did. Man, talk about good timing. Within a month, I had sold my house uh -huh. double my money. I found homes for my dogs. Uh -huh. I got I my cat loaded up. I wish you didn't. We would have been millionaires right now. Yeah. If, that, if that you hadn't sold that house, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and off I went to Romania. So I lived in what well, we were in. I was in Romania five years. Uh, met Bogdan actually at a party mm -hmm. uh, by uh, hosted by Princess Brianna Caraja. Oh my goodness! Uh, a relative of Dracula. Magic. Yeah. I I went to work in Romania, uh -huh. and there I uh, got to meet a princess. Yeah, wow. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so that was that was a, a fortuitous meeting, and uh, met Bogdan, and uh, we started talking, and. Bogdan, you want to talk a little bit about what you were doing at the time? I was working in television production at the mm -hmm. time. And, uh, as a matter of fact, I worked a lot with Brianna, with mm -hmm. the princess he just met. And uh, I was working on 
many shows, like the live shows and some other pre-recorded shows, mm -hmm. and, uh, including Big Brother. And uh, oh. later on, yeah, moved to other kind of live reality shows like Big Brother, and uh -huh. Star Factory, and I don't even remember how many other. Mm -hmm. And you did you did a lot of news TV news production. I I started in news. I actually I was a voiceover for a while, mm -hmm. and then I got very bored about that, just reading others' news. Mm -hmm. So I asked permission to be moved as a reporter of a morning show, uh -huh. and um, they said, "Sure, mm -hmm. if you can, why not?" Yeah. So um, that was my beginning, right. actually, in creating stories and mm -hmm. understanding how this business is all about. Mm -hmm. And I had very, very great people who really supported me and, and you know, gave me the, the, the chance to do it. Yeah, yeah. And that believe in me. Mm -hmm. But and then that morning show went away, and I, I, I felt the need to, to switch something, to mm -hmm. uh, move to the entertainment mm -hmm. part of the television. Right. And um, there was actually the growth of mm -hmm. my career mm -hmm. when I got to do live shows and work with big stars and work with big produ producers and um, to to see and work and explore all the fields of mm -hmm. what television production is yeah. about. What really got you into um, TV in the first oh, place? Oh, it's this a very you wanted to do since you were a kid. It's, or? it's a very weird beginning. I finished high school and. Uh, I got into my first uh, college after school. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't like it, and I didn't know what to do in my life. It's after the revolution. Everybody is like all over the place. We don't know what to do with ourselves. I knew, I knew that I wanted something creative, but <clears throat> I couldn't think of radio or television because we didn't have that much radio and television at the time. Uh -huh. But, you know, I... What I, year I, was this? Then? This was in 90... Okay. But then, you know, a year later, I bought this FM radio. It was like something crazy. <laughs> but there was there was there was no channels to listen to. I would have loved to to switch on that FM uh -huh. uh, and, and and listen to some radio. But that was uh, you needed a Lone Star radio in Romania. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, with just a little bit luck, you could get a frequency from Bulgaria mm -hmm. in, in good days. I don't know why <laughs> that, that frequency didn't flow uh -huh. very well because of the mountains. I have no idea. Anyway, from time to time, you would get a little FM music, uh -huh. and that was exciting. But, you know, doing this every day, you know, one day it was like there, switching on the, uh, the tuner and just bang, this clear music. I called my brother and I said, listen to this. This must be a radio station nearby. Uh -huh. this, this, what's going on? So um, we figured out that it, it's got to be in the city we live in, mm -hmm. right? So we got out, like right away, uh -huh. and said, let's look on the building. <laughs> if it's a radio, it's got to have a big antenna. antenna. Uh -huh. <laughs> so we found it. Oh, my goodness. We got into the last floor of this building, uh -huh. knocked on the door, and there was this guy. <laughs> Under hello, the antenna. Hello, hello. And, uh, you know, and, oh, my God, we are so interested in finding more about this radio and maybe work here. Uh -huh. I said, absolutely. I need people. Oh, my goodness. I need people. I just turned on the radio yesterday. There was this America, American company who would invest in Romania. And uh -huh. They brought and opened many stations around Romania at the I time. See. And there was the part of that. Uh -huh. Deal was the radio in the city I lived in, and um, that was the start. <laughs> I was like, it was magic. It mm -hmm. was magic, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, if the, the guy brought all this uh, out of the world machineries and satellites and computers, I was like, oh my god, programming music, uh -huh. and I was on them. <laughs> I loved every bit of them. But then I I need to move to Bucharest because I started my University. Uh -huh. uh, I work for a small channel, small radio channel in Bucharest mm -hmm. until I find my way to the television station. Okay. And how did you end up in TV? 
it was funny because I wanted to switch from that radio, small radio channel to a bigger one. Something bigger. Yes. Uh -huh. And um, you know how those are. It's competition in every way. So I got a, a, a voices for the news. Mm -hmm. uh, the producer at that time said, I love your voice, but you need a little training mm -hmm. or because I don't know this is our station has this mm -hmm. freedom, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And they put me in a training with this lady who, who worked with this big group. So the radio and the television were together. It's like a big company, uh -huh. right? So this lady would train both mm -hmm. radio people and television people mm -hmm. how to how to I see. speak and how to read the prompter, and uh -huh. et cetera. So I got to work with her. And at some point on the way, she said, you're done. And guess what? There is a room at the voiceover there at the news. Would you consider it? Oh. I said, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Let's give it a chance. Mm -hmm. So this is how I started. That's how you ended up in the radio. You know, you just, it's, it's about networking. It's it about is. meeting the right people mm -hmm. in the right place. And Doing good work where And you saying are. yes when those opportunities, mm -hmm. you know, show up. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So Bogdan is the creative eye behind Boobarooza. And Don, I, tell us your I role. I write the checks. You write the checks. <laughs> no, no, I also have a, a, a lot of creative, I've, I've done a lot of creative writing. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, over the years and, and done some children's books. You write a lot of scripts and that kind of thing do for all, your clients. I do all the script writing. The videos, right? He's my uh, critique. Yes, and I yes. tell him everything he does wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and I hate it. I hate it every time. <laughs> it's nice to I mean, hear what you're doing right than what I said, you're doing wrong. It's modern. It? It's, I love it. Yeah. What's wrong? No, no, it drives me crazy. <laughs> Where did your love of writing come from, Don? Um, I actually from college mm -hmm. it was really when I was uh, I was a Spanish and English major in uh -huh. college, so I did a lot of reading mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, doing a lot of writing then. And I also did quite a lot of photography growing up uh, because I was doing that traveling. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was going to exciting places, so you wanted to document it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, cameras made sense. Yeah, uh, but that was in the old days. You know, it was when well, we still had cameras and film and yeah, all that kind of stuff. You'd have yeah. to run. <laughs> <laughs> run to the drugstore to get them back because yeah. <laughs> I didn't do my own developing. But uh, it was um, it was when we were in Romania. It was absolutely bizarre because uh, here I am a librarian and I'm going to parties with all of the the movie stars uh -huh. and TV personalities. Mm -hmm. I had no idea who they were, mm -hmm. which drove them crazy that yeah. I <laughs> that I didn't didn't give them any special treatment. So they adored me for that. Uh, and. Uh, it was just really strange to, to walk into an airport and have some Romanian star go, John! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody looking at me. Wow. Well, I, I love hearing your background. Um, thank you all so much for sharing your stories. When we come back after the break, we're going to talk a little bit more about what Bubaruza is today and what you all do and um, how you're using networking to build your business and all that good stuff. So we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Please stay tuned. You're listening to Stacey Harris with Making Connections. Hey guys, this is Connor. This is Dick. This is Chris. And we're with the Ticket Stub Podcast every Thursday live at noon on 104.5 and 106.1 FM in the Conroe area. Also, anytime at IRLoneStar.com. You go to IRLoneStar.com backslash TTS. You can find all of our social media. And don't forget, we give away two tickets to the Grand Theater on every show. If you like movies and you like complaining or celebrating anything that has to do with the silver screen, Check out the Ticket Stuff podcast and join us every Thursday at noon o'clock on Lone Star Community Radio. Our talk shows and music shows are looking for sponsors. Want to expand your brand awareness? Reach the hyper-local audience in Montgomery County? Lone Star Community Radio sponsorships accomplish this. Want to see our stats and rates? Check out ourlonestar.com slash sponsor for more information. Or call in and leave us a message at 936-647-3776 with your questions get seen on tv youtube and heard on our podcast fm and internet radio support your local radio station with lone star community radio hey welcome back this is stacy harris and you're listening to making connections and i have as my guests today john bishop and bogdan mihai they are together boobaruza productions 
They are a wonderful video production company. I hope you were listening earlier to kind of hear their background story of how they met in the exotic country of Romania, which is where Bogdan is from. Uh, John is a writer. Bogdan has done radio and TV, and he's kind of the creative eye with Bubariza Productions. And I wanted them to be on the show today because they have done some just incredible videos for me, for members um, of my Network in Action groups and everything that they do. I didn't even tell you guys this this morning. A friend of mine in Montana sent me a Facebook message um, over the weekend and asked me, who are your video production guys? Because she still has business holdings here in this area. So you're probably going to be hearing from her. Hey, so. I'll go to Montana. Yeah, I know. I know that'd be <laughs> I awesome. I was just uh, showing to someone the other day your clip with uh, yes. uh, Claudia. Uh -huh. And I noticed I have 13,000 plays. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so one of the very first videos we did together, it was crazy it's, how many... It's pure organic, we never it was. promote that no, in any way. No, it really was. Uh, we did our first video together back in April mm -hmm. in 2017, and um, man, it was the first experience that I had had really doing anything like that. I've done some TV shows and, and stuff like that before, but as far as putting something like that out on Facebook and social media... And I was just blown away by the comments, the number of views, the business that brought in, the calls, the interest, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So Good clip. Mm -hmm. that's really, you know, part of what I wanted to talk about is just where Bubaruza is today and um, what exactly it is that you do. Because there is networking. There's the network in action kind of networking where you mm -hmm. go to a monthly meeting and, and that kind of thing. But, of course the big networking that pretty much everybody in the world is plugged into is the social networking. Right, so right. through social media. And um, so I want you all to talk a little bit about um, how you are using video, how you're building your company, um, you know, through both kinds of networking, all that good stuff. Who wants to go first? Well, you know, this is the second year, actually, right? Well, we're the, the, the we finished really the second year. Mm -hmm. serious mm -hmm. uh, business we're doing. With, without day jobs. <laughs> and, uh, and we tried last it's year. Yeah, indeed. Time. And you, we tried last year all kinds of things. You know, we uh, we did a lot of networking, and that paid off. And uh, we started a vlog series, and we tried to be very active on social media. Uh, of course, I, I don't think we drove anybody crazy with too much stuff on mm -hmm. social media. Mm -hmm. um, but we did all kinds of things to put our, our name out there, mm -hmm. you know, and to, to let people who we really are and what we're doing. And it's so important. I mean, video is absolutely imperative for people these days. And, and if they're, if your your businesses aren't using video, you will be soon. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, it's going to happen. The, I think the real problem is that traditionally, because coming from a TV background, uh, production was so incredible incredibly expensive and still can be mm -hmm. uh, and then you've got the other alternative is to you know use your uncle or your your nephews in college right and there's not a lot in between mm -hmm. and so what we were hoping to do is create a business that could actually reach out to the smaller mid-sized companies right who says you know I can't afford and I don't need full on you know Hollywood production in a studio in a uh -huh. studio and uh, but I need some quality uh, editing and some quality video production, mm -hmm. and that's really the niche we're trying to, mm -hmm. to go after. Yeah. It is so important to, when you have a business, um, to put out there a story mm -hmm. that reflects you or the mm -hmm. business owner and are. the products that you sell mm -hmm. uh, in, in a very appealing way so that you you can create this bridge with your customers. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, this is what they want. They want a story about you, mm -hmm. about what you're doing, about what you create. Mm -hmm. And this we're trying to tell everybody, you know, you have to do, you have to put a video on your right. market uh, and you have marketing to be, plan. And you have to be able to tell a story. And I think that's the, the, the real expertise that Bogdan brings is he can do that kind of editing. Mm -hmm. and, and hopefully I can bring in some storytelling as well from my past and, and actually create a message uh, mm -hmm. more than just a video. It, right. It's, every, anybody can put put a camera in front of you, mm -hmm. but what what you do with that to edit it, and then what you do with it once you've gotten it, how do you distribute it out on social media or on right. your web page or whatever. Right. So we do a lot of that kind of, uh, mm -hmm. kind of recommendations and um, help people actually distribute their videos once yeah. they've gotten them. Why do you think all of a sudden, I mean, it's been like just 
it seems like everything is video mm -hmm. now. And why do you think just all of a sudden that just has video. come about, that, it, that everything is about, the, you know, Facebook Live and just all of that kind of stuff? What do you think? I is believe that for a long time there was on power be stuck photography. Everything is perfect and beautiful. Mm -hmm. and you, don't, you don't know the reality of um, someone. Uh -huh. But you know what? People want stories mm -hmm. and people want to hear you and mm -hmm. people want to see you, how you talk. To, re to, 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 to resonate with you? Is this resonate. Mm -hmm. um, Good word. Yeah, yeah. I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I would think, too, that it's the technology. Technology has, has built to a point yeah. where you don't have to be an expert to run a camera. It's just so much more readily <laughs> available. To we all have wonderful cameras in our phones, mm -hmm. and they will do video. And they will, I mean, they're shooting Hollywood films on phones. On phones. Uh -huh. uh, just to prove they can. Yeah. So... Uh, I, I think it, it placed that technology within the reach of most of us, mm -hmm. uh, and we would never have bought that equipment, that uh, audio and video right. equipment before. Right. So now we have these great tools, and now we just need the expertise in how to mm -hmm. use them. So I think that was probably a big driving factor. Yeah. And I think you make a great point, Bogdan, about um, for so long everything was just glossy magazine mm -hmm. looking, you know, mm -hmm. everything photoshopped. And I mean, Yes, Don't get me I wrong. Can... Photoshop is your friend when you're yeah, having absolutely. headshots. Absolutely. Taken, sure. And you want to look good, good from things. time to time. But, yes, you know, but it is good to see that. the genuine person. Mm -hmm. Right. To know what they sound like and how they talk yeah. and all of those kinds of things. To see some personality. And we always through. we recommend that to, to our clients. Is that you shouldn't use us for everything. That would be creepy. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. <laughs> I mean, I always say, you wouldn't hire a photographer to come in for Thanksgiving. It's True. Just, you know? Mm -hmm. But uh, but you would for a wedding, yeah. you know? Yeah, for sure, yes. Well, I, I love not only the quality of the video that you take. Um, you know, there definitely is a place for your Facebook Live <coughs> videos and, and all of those kinds of things. But um, when you are reaching out, um, really trying to establish yourself as a brand and as a professional and things like that, I think the, the quality of the production that you guys do is just is so good. Oh, and, thank you. And so there definitely is a, there's a time and a place, you know, for that. Um, and I, you know, again, the video that you guys did for me, and we've, we've done a lot of videos together, um, but so many of them, it connected me. You uh -huh. know, I have a lot more Facebook friends now that I did the video, since I've done the videos with you all. Oh, magnificent. Yeah. Because they get liked and shared and, you know, uh -huh. all of that kind of stuff. And so, again, it's just kind of a, that another form of networking. And, and from our point of view, people refer you. I mean, that's how we get most of our mm -hmm. business. And and you call people you know when yes. you have a, a job like this. Mm -hmm. and, and so we really do need to build those relationships right. with our clients so that right. they feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Stacy's the best person to photograph because mm -hmm. she says, just, just, I'll do what you tell me. Yeah. <laughs> Don't make me look bad. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's, but a, that's an easy assignment. But you and I have seven outfits to change, and the yes. shooting is only 45 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, the seven outfits, that was your idea, not mine. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and Bogdan thought that a woman could just change her dress and, I, and that yeah. she'd be ready for the next He didn't I, understand I, the accessories and I, the makeup no. and the shoes. And, and I the, didn't understand that yeah. we don't have actually half a day. That's right. That's right. <laughs> But it was a good shoot. That it was. was a good it was a great shoot. Mm -hmm. um, I want y'all to talk a little bit about how, uh, since you have started your business in this area, um, because y'all were in Europe, right? And then you came back over here, and so you've, you know, launched your business here. And how have you used networking to actually? We were your business? in a number of places. We were after Romania. We were in the Emirates, then in uh, New Zealand, and then a strange land called California. Yes. And then uh, and in Russia for the last, what, six years mm -hmm. before coming home. And we had opened the company, but we couldn't really work because of our visas. So really it was coming back to Texas and to, to this, to the Conroe area that, uh, that we really opened the business for, for real, for mm -hmm. and seriously. And so we had no contacts whatsoever 
you know, uh, talking about referrals. Nobody knew who we were. Right. And uh, so we had to start from ground zero and, mm -hmm. and just build those relationships. Mm -hmm. So networking was incredibly important for us um, because we didn't know anyone and no one knew us. Mm -hmm. And you know how it would be, like walking on ice. You don't know, you know. It's uh -huh. just, you have to feel it. You have to make yeah. connections with the right people. Mm -hmm. You know, do I trust them? Do I don't? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, as a Romanian, <coughs> you need to be very careful. You don't just trust anybody. Uh -huh. you know? And I think, too, we're selling mm -hmm. something that not everybody has bought before. True. You know, no, not a lot of people have, have done lots of videos. So they don't have a great expectation of, of what we do either. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to not only sell ourselves, but sell our product. Mm -hmm. um, and that has been remarkably successful. And I think what makes us special um, is having this television background. Mm -hmm. Everything has to happen fast. Yeah. I don't have time to mm -hmm. deliver a product in three months. Right. I mean, it's just too long. Mm -hmm. I need it tomorrow. The needs are you know? Uh -huh. Uh, why would I shoot today and deliver in two months? That's just obscene. Mm -hmm. You have to be fast. Yes, they are incredibly fast. This, the first video shoot we did was, um, I don't know, but we shot for a couple of hours, oh, I yes. guess, yes. but two, maybe two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did uh, we did it with the, my business partner and one of my, in my other business impressions and Claudia Van Harn. So we were doing this photo shoot together or the video shoot together. We did change clothes about seven times <laughs> because Bogdan had this great creative idea and it turned out wonderfully. So it was, it was a great idea. Uh, but the turnaround time, he had that video to me. So we shot it like first thing in the morning about nine o'clock and uh, cause that was early spring, but it was still very warm that day. And uh, we wrapped up about 11, I think it was. And by about Six o'clock that night, he was sending me the first edited version yeah. of it. I mean, was it was it that just, fast? it was that remember. fast. Yes, I could <laughs> believe it. And it was, man. And that, you know, if you were scared of video, I, I wanted to say this. If you're scared of video, don't be because Bogdan is such a great editor mm -hmm. that you truly can't mess it up. Right. I mean, that y'all can take out whatever isn't there, you know, or if there's something that you say that you shouldn't say, all of that can be taken out. Absolutely. You get stumbled on your words or, you know, anything like that. So. He, he even has a button for, uh. No, I yeah. don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we're going to wrap up this segment. Um, take a quick break and we'll come back. We'll talk a little bit more about using video production to connect with people. I want us to get into that a little bit more through the social media arena. So thank you so much for listening in. You're uh, listening to Making Connections with Stacey Harris. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Hey, Montgomery County. It's me, C.C. Holmes. And I would personally like to take this time to invite you, that's right, you, to join me every Saturday and Sunday from 3 until 7 p.m. where I will bring you the very best, the very best of smooth jazz, classic jazz, and indeed, yes, the soulful sounds of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. So come along and get jazzy with me. That's right, jazzy. <laughs> right here, of course, on Conroe's 104.5 and 106. 6.1 FM or worldwide at IRLongstar.com. Don't miss Lone Star Community Radio on TV and YouTube. Our talk show and music shows are featured on Our City TV, Suddenlink Channel 12, and have their own YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe to keep up with posted shows and comment on them below the video. And I have as my guest today, John Bishop and Bogdan Mihai, excuse me, and they are Bubaruza Productions. They do video production and photography. Um, we've talked a little bit about their background today, um, how they met and formed their business together, um, and just how video has just become the big thing. You have to, if you're in business, you got to have a video. Right. And um, you know. what I recommend people is yes, yes, you should have a video, but you, mm -hmm. sh you should have. Many videos. Many videos. And so that was what I wanted us to talk about a little bit more in this. Because session. what social media became is just like your own television channel, mm -hmm. like your own news channel. Right. You have to 
keep these people, keep your followers mm -hmm. uh, up to date mm -hmm. about what you're doing, what's new, what right. teach them a little, uh, make them uh, comfortable with the, the techniques or the product mm -hmm. or whatever you sell. Mm -hmm. uh, make them understand the importance of what they should buy mm -hmm. a thing or another. Mm -hmm. And when you look at return on investment, uh, all of the all of the numbers that are coming back say you know that if you've got a video with your with your message, mm -hmm. your your hit rate goes way up, uh, and that uh, uh, video uh, increases the not only the the kind of attention that you get, mm -hmm. but will stick with people more. They, you know, we were we do some some work with clients, and they will have strangers walk up to them and just start talking, and they they don't understand why, you know, where they know them from. And they've seen them on video. They've seen the video. And they yep. think that they're friends. And they yes. say, this is golden, uh -huh. you know. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, the power of, of video can mm -hmm. be just transformative mm -hmm. in a business. Mm -hmm. And like I say, it doesn't have to all be uh, powerful, edited, expensive uh, professional footage. But you need <laughs> to have, you need to work video into your overall marketing plan. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's got to be there. Right. And, how you get there may depend on your business and, and, mm -hmm. and what you can afford. But uh. and, and mix them up. You know, you have mm -hmm. a video today, you have mm -hmm. a picture tomorrow, and so on. Mm -hmm. Because you won't have a video every day. Uh, right. Some people are not very comfortable on filming themselves right. or, or talking in front of the camera themselves. Mm -hmm. Some have this ability, which is great, but, mm -hmm. you know, I, I can't. I'm a Romanian and I have an accent and I don't feel comfortable. comfortable speaking myself mm -hmm. in, in a phone camera. Uh -huh. So I need a picture and I need something that is pre-recorded maybe. Mm -hmm. You know, it's um, planned. Right, right. And that is something that you all do as far as writing the script. Absolutely. For that sort of non-threatening background that you're doing. Mm -hmm. What are some other ways um, that you can use video besides Facebook? I think a lot of times we think just Facebook, mm -hmm. but there are, after knowing you guys and, and you exposing me, to this this medium, mm -hmm. um, what are other ways that you can use video to promote your business? YouTube. Okay. Yep. Is, is this mm -hmm. the, creating the, your yeah. own channel on yeah. YouTube? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of ends up being a, a great kind of repository place you can put all of your videos. Mm -hmm. You know, if you are more artsy, you can put up your video on Vimeo. Mm -hmm. um, you can uh, have small bites into Instagram. Mm -hmm. And Twitter. And Twitter. Uh, and it, it really doesn't need to be the same content everywhere. Mm -hmm. It could be just a short segment from the main video mm -hmm. shared on all these channels. Right. There's uh, also, you can also include video with your email. You can do video emails. And yes. I know we went to a conference. We uh, did, yeah. We went to a marketing class yep. together mm -hmm. and we talked about that a lot. That, that was really interesting because they were talking about so basically, you open up the email, and the email is just a video of mm. you. Talking directly to your... Yes. And so the class we actually went to is geared more for the real estate mm -hmm. industry. But um, that was one of the things that this guy was talking about. Like, he would, he, would send the, he would send the video email, and when you open it up, it was him saying, hey, we've gotten all your paperwork done, and we're going to close on Friday on your house. And so basically, it was instead of having an email, having anything written at all, it was just him telling him what telling them what he needed them to know right. about the process, you know, where they were in the process of buying their house and closing on it and all of that kind of stuff. So I thought that was really interesting. Oh, and very powerful. Yeah. I can also see where that would just make you feel like your realtor was your friend. Exactly. You know, that whoever it is that you're, because you're seeing them face to face. Even you though didn't have it to is. drive across town. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yeah. And I notice more and more websites that you go to now, mm -hmm. there's almost always some kind of a, video explaining services or you know mm -hmm. something like that that they've got if it's a product that they're featuring they have a video that's about the product um I know even my doctor uh, there was a you know a, I have a, a new doctor um, I'm doing this treatment for migraine headaches he actually sent me a video before my very first appointment that went through the process that explained you know this is what we're going to be doing oh, from start to finish um, this is what your treatment is going to be, and this is how often you're going to come in, and this is what we're doing. And, and that was really valuable because, um, you know, I actually sat down with my husband the night before the first appointment and said, okay, you know, this is what I'm going to be doing, and, 
and it got him on board. You know, mm-hmm. it made sense to him, and so he kind of understood what it was that we were going to be doing, things like that. So on blogging, blogging, it's another way um, to promote yourself. Yeah. You know, it, how it, often do you need? I, I think you know, for me, stuff like this, it always just boils down to time. Absolutely. There are just but so many hours in the day. Mm-hmm. So how often do we need to post a new video or post a new picture or, you know, I always say there like there's a fine line between tenacious and obnoxious, right? And I don't ever want to cross that line. I, you know, I, w- I want to be tenacious in my business and getting the word out there and you know that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But you don't want to, you know, there are some people that you pull up on Facebook and you're you like, just roll oh your eyes. my yeah. goodness, and do they just sit on Facebook Live all day? Is that all they have to do? And I don't care about your cat and exactly what, yeah. or what you had for breakfast. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, how do you? How do you determine what what it would kind of be a good rule of thumb as far as you it's, guys are it's, concerned it's, with the I social I think media? it's really up to each individual mm-hmm. how much they can do. That's why I mean it needs to be part of your marketing plan. Right. So you need to be doing this on purpose. Mm-hmm. You know, so if you don't have a message, you probably shouldn't be on. Right. <laughs> but uh, you know, I think we're looking at you know th- there also is the thing that if you don't do it enough, you're not you're not topical, mm-hmm. and so. Uh, you know, for for video and blogging, that kind of thing, I think uh, once a week is plenty. Okay. Uh, I, I have people who say two, three times a week. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I don't have that much mes- I don't have that much mes- messaging personally. Right. Right. I, I mean, I'm not interested to share what I eat every day. Mm-hmm. It's not important for mm-hmm. me, at least. Mm-hmm. You know, this is. We have a vlog, mm-hmm. and. Uh, we restarted a new series right now, and it's all about our business and what are we doing and where are we. Mm-hmm. And the, the the vlog is for those who are like us. Yeah. You know, we are looking for followers for people like us mm-hmm. that are new in the business uh-huh. and wanna exchange some experiences. Uh-huh. And and each format is going to be a little different. Twitter has a very different following. Mm-hmm. So Twitter is all fast and images and Instagram, you know, it, it's immediate and uh, uh, Pinterest is going to be quite different again and you you have to kind of build your marketing around what those different social media platforms do. Mm-hmm. And and so I don't think there's a one one answer for for it all. Yeah. Uh, it just kind of depends on what, what message you have and what what uh, platform you're using. Mm-hmm. And there's a, a lot of people out there who are very interested in building this kind of media and videos and images. And they often come to you and say, you know, I want something like such and such, where such and such has a team of production behind. Yeah. <laughs> you right. I mean, we, you were lucky because we are doing all these things. Right. But if you want an everyday thing, uh-huh. and you want me to follow you, mm-hmm. I don't know where, to film right. every minute of your life. Mm-hmm. That's impossible. Right. You need a team. You need to hire a team. Right. Yeah. And that's not feasible for most. For most small, small businesses. to medium-sized yeah. businesses. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just, I love you guys so much. I, I so believe in what well, you're doing. Too. And um, you have educated me so much on video and how um, you really proved to me this can work. You yeah, know, it yeah. really has. And because I have had that experience of literally sitting in the coffee shop and somebody coming up to me and going, oh, here's Stacy. I've seen your video, you know. <laughs> and it's kind of, it takes you back at first. Yeah. But you really do realize that people just feel like they know you when they mm-hmm. see you. And mm-hmm. and um, it is such a wonderful form of networking. It's very powerful. Yeah. And it's, it's more than that. It's if you want to put your face out there, mm-hmm. then in, in – day-to-day life, mm-hmm. you need to prove that you are that person. That's right. Because, you know, when you meet people at the coffee shop, uh-huh. you have to match that image. Yes. You know yeah. what I mean? You can't just be a persona. Yeah, you can't right. just, oh, mm-hmm. you know, you want to be turn their back. You know, yeah. you have to be ready for that. Yeah. And I think it's important, too, to, to kind of keep in mind that there's, video is incredibly powerful, but there's, there's very little is as negative as a bad video. Mm-hmm. That's so right. you, you do have to do some investment. I mean, you've got yeah. a, you've got your camera on your phone, but get a little tripod, get a little gimbal, yes. buy a little bit of equipment. You don't have to spend, mm-hmm. you know, more than a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. Okay. But I want to some finish attention up. to it because yes. if you're shaking, it looks like a horror film. Okay. We need to take a quick break, but mm-hmm. I want to come back and I do want to talk about that before we okay. wrap things up completely. So um, again.
Again, we're with Boober is the production, John Bishop and Bogdan Mihai. You're listening to Making Connections with Stacey Harris. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. Lone Star Community Radio presents the Lone Star Radio Troupe. This talented cast will perform radio plays right here in the Lone Star Studios located in downtown Conroe. There will be a new performance every first Sunday of the month. And if you miss the broadcast, just go to Lone Star Community Radio's podcast or YouTube anytime during that month. Go to our LoneStar.com archives to find the Lone Star Radio Troupe's latest play that's available. This is Lone Star Community Radio, Conroe's 104.5 FM and 106.1 FM community station. Find us on the web at IRLoneStar.com. Lone Star Community Radio is a supporter to the performing arts in Montgomery County, Texas. Don't forget to download the Lone Star Community Radio app from your Google Play or Apple Store. Bring Montgomery County's community radio with you anywhere with your smartphone or tablet. If you are in the Conroe area, tune in on FM. That's Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1. If you are on the computer, bookmark IRLoneStar.com as your internet radio station. A Lone Star Community Radio. Broadcasting 24-7 from the heart of downtown Conroe, Texas. Hi, you're listening to Making Connections with Stacey Harris, and I am here with John and Bogdan with Boobaroo's of Productions. And um, we were talking about before the commercial break, um, using video and how it can help you connect. It's just a much larger platform of networking than just doing the face-to-face and um, we touched on right before this, uh, before the commercial break, how important it is to have good video. Because if you have bad video, those are what go viral. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. it's the big mistakes, or it's the poor quality production, and it's the sharing it with your friend, going, "Can you believe that they put this out there on mm-hmm. Facebook or whatever?" Um, and so much of what I do in coaching people and networking and things like that, I talk to them, is their image. Exactly. It's all about their image. That's my image consulting company. You know, that's, it's called impressions because the first impression that you make, that is what sticks with you. And for a lot of people, what they don't realize is their first impression, it may be a video mm-hmm. that they Absolutely. see of you. And um, so, man, you know, yeah. it's one thing when you meet somebody in person and you mess it up, then hopefully maybe you'll cross paths with them again and mm-hmm. you can say, you know, I, I know that I didn't look my best that day I ran into you in the grocery store. I didn't make the best impression. You might have a chance, but with video, you don't know where it's going. Right. You and know, it, it may end up on when, the other side of the world. Especially when you sell something. Yes. Yeah. So um, talk a little bit about, you know, the importance of Well, I mean, it, it, it's like any ph- photographic uh, environment, photography and video are about light. And, mm-hmm. and so you've got to have enough light. You've got to have a good enough sound or mm-hmm. people will turn it off. Mm-hmm. So it, it's the image needs to be stable and it needs to, you need to have good audio. Uh, the, uh, the way to achieve that can be, you know, you don't need a lot of equipment. Mm-hmm. You can set that, that, uh, phone on a book on a table and you've got a tripod, right. uh, you just need to make sure that it's not a table that's shaking with the cat on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but uh, and the audio, you know, you can buy these uh, uh, level ear mics, uh, kind of wireless mics, or you can just get these microphones that you plug directly into your phone mm-hmm. and, uh, and 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 get the quality sound that your phone can can provide. Mm-hmm. So you've got all the equipment. There's also the stabilizing thing. The gimbals, I think, are are now a lot of people are using. Um, so, uh, but I mean. I've seen people who who want to get a, a a nice pan across a room, and they put their phone on a small tripod on a co- on a uh, on a small towel and drag it across the table. It does exactly yeah. the same thing. <laughs> um, so you can be pretty economical with the way you do this, but you need to be worried about: is my video clear? Is is the sound good? And is it light enough? Mm-hmm. How about the live video? Live mm-hmm. videos. A, yeah, lot a lot of people, people doing do live, live yeah. now. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just the same. Find right. a place that works best for you. Mm-hmm. Make sure your phone is held by something if mm-hmm. you don't have a tripod. Mm-hmm. You know, stay close to it so that you have the sound because 
many people don't have a microphone right. to put their finger to. So anyway, stay close to the mic, to mm -hmm. the phone, and make sure you have a source of light somewhere there so right. that you, all, you are not all black. Because mm -hmm. yeah. if you are in shade, that's how people and your followers will start to uh, uh, associate you with, mm -hmm. that your business is shady. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and also things like um, the, you need to check the room, be, you know, stop. Is the air conditioner making so much noise? Mm -hmm. uh, so with, uh, somebody I, I saw had a really good video, and they were standing outside in a beautiful place, and there was a bird going absolutely mental behind him. <laughs> You were like, okay, either kill the bird. No, don't kill the bird. No, no you don't want to kill the bird. But move. We love animals. Yes, yeah. shush the bird. Uh, um, yeah, it was crazy because all I heard was the bird. That's all you could focus on. Yeah. 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 So be aware of your surroundings when you're doing right, a video. Right, it, yeah. it's, it's all about sound and light. <laughs> tweet, tweet, yeah. No, it was much louder than that. Well, I um, I appreciate you guys being on with me so much. Um, thank you so much for your experiences oh, that you, you have shared. Um, you all have done a wonderful job getting out in this community of Woodland and Conroe and um, have built up such a great reputation. So proud to call you all my friends. And, um, and just I appreciate so much what you have taught me, what you have done for my business personally. And, you know, um, the relationship that we've been able to build is just really valuable to me, and that's what it's really all about. So right, really NIA has been a huge that. part of that. Thank you. You have done so much for us. Thank uh, you. Not only you, but the people in NIA, mm -hmm. and we we value it tremendously. Yes. Yeah. And, we've I, got and I have to say, only we've done the video for uh -huh. you, the people have started talking. Oh. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I am, you know, I'm so fortunate. We we live in such a great place. I, this this area of Woodlands and Conroe, um, we've got the best people that are here. And every day I just say a little prayer of thank you, God, that you landed me here. Um, it's just uh, the networking community here is just unbelievable. The networking events, um, the chambers of commerce that we have in this area, um, it's just such a close-knit community as a whole. And I think we definitely saw that when Hurricane Harvey blew through. Um, what an extraordinary place it is that we live in. And um, so, you know, I, I just want to encourage everybody that's listening to take advantage of this community that we have, of all of the networking events that are out there, of the people that are available to us as resources, as inspiration, as mentors, you know, all of those kinds of things. And um, to really don't look at networking as a chore, but look at it as an adventure. If you can just turn your mind around about that, you know, I think it just, it makes such a huge difference. It really does. So. Um, thank you so much for listening to the show today. Again, it's Making Connections. We are on the second Tuesday of each month at 1 o'clock. And uh, we'd love to invite you to attend a Network in Action meeting. We actually have two meetings next week on January 16th and 18th. And uh, we'd love to invite anybody that wants a personal invitation. You can send me a message via Facebook. Or you can contact me at Stacy S T A C Y at networkinaction.com. Our Facebook page is N I A the Woodlands. Um, so I'll let you know where and when we're going to be meeting. And I just again want to wish everybody a really happy new year. Many many blessings in this new year. I can't wait to see how it all unfolds. We will see you next month. Thanks again for listening.